Sutta, chapter 2, text 58. Yada, Samharate, Cha, Ayam, Ayam, Kurmaha, Kurmaha, Angani, Angani, Yva, Yva, Sarvashaha, Sarvashaha. Indriyani, Indriyani, Indriyarte Pyaha, Indriyarte Pyaha, Tasya, Tasya, Pragya, Pragya, Pratishtita, Pratishtita, Yada Samharate Chayam, Yada Samharate Chayam, Kurmangani Vasarvashaha, Kurmangani Vasarvashaha, Indriyani Indriyarte Pyas, Pratishtita, Yada Samharate Chayam, Yada Samharate Chayam, Kurmangani Vasarvasha, Kurmangani Vasarvasha, Indriyan Indriyarte Bias, Indriyan Indriyarte Bias, Tasya Pragya Pratishtita, Tasya Pragya Pratishtita, Yada Samharate Chayam, Yada Also. Also. Tiež. Tiež. 
The test of a yogi, devotee, or self-realized first soul is that he is able to control the senses according to his plan. Most people, however, are servants of the senses and are thus directed by the dictation of the senses. That is the answer to the question as to how the yogi is situated. The senses are compared to venomous serpents. They want to act very loosely and without restriction. The yogi or the devotee must be very strong to control the serpents like a snake charmer. He never allows them to act independently. There are many injunctions in the revealed scriptures. Some of them are do-nots and some of them are do's. Unless one is able to follow the do's and the do-nots, restricting oneself from sense enjoyment is not possible. Excuse me. Unless one is able to follow the do's and the do-nots, restricting oneself from sense enjoyment it is not possible to be firmly fixed in Krishna consciousness. Ak sa nedokáže radiť týmito príkazmi a zákazmi a neobmedzí svoje zmyslové pôžitky, nemôže svoje myšlienky plne sústrediť na Krišnu. The best example set herein is the tortoise. Najlepším príkladom, ktorý ilustruje túto myšlienku, je korytnačka. The tortoise can at any moment wind up its senses and exhibit them again at any time for particular purposes. Názorne, ak by mal človek svoje zmysly vždy používať v službe pánovi. Similarly, the senses of the Krishna conscious persons are used only for some particular purpose in the service of the Lord and are withdrawn otherwise. Koryknačka môže hocikedy stiahnuť svoje údy a opäť ich podľa potrebe vysunúť. Podobne ľudia vedomí si Krišnu používajú svoje zmysly, len aby odmane slúžili Krišnovi inak nie. Arjuna is being taught here to use his senses for the service of the Lord instead of for his own satisfaction. Keeping the senses always in the service of the Lord is the example set by the analogy of the tortoise who keeps the senses within.
Keeping the senses always in the service of the Lord is the example set by the analogy of the tortoise who keeps the senses within. So the senses, the sense of touch, the sense of sight, the sense of smell, the sense of taste, they're acting in contact with sense objects. When there's sound, then the ears become attracted to certain sounds. Just like the deer, the deer is attracted by beautiful music. So hunters, they play some flute or some music, and the deer becomes captivated by the sound. But while they're being captivated, the hunter shoots them. Because in that state of captivation, he forgets that I'm in the forest, I'm a deer, there's hunters, I could be shot. He forgets the bigger picture and he gets caught up just in the gratification of his ears. The moth, moths are attracted to light, even fire, the light of fire. They like to get closer and closer to the light. Sometimes they get carried away with getting closer and they fly right into the fire and they become extinguished. Or even sometimes they go up to the light bulb, they want to get as close as they can and they get burned and they die. Again, their senses are attracted, but they lose their equilibrium and they go too far. The fish has a very strong sense of taste. So the fishermen put something that's tasty for the fish, but they hide it on a hook. Or they hide the hook on the food. So the fish, he's very eager to taste the food, or whatever it is, but he doesn't take enough care to look and see if there's a hook there. He gets caught. The elephant is very sexually strong. When the elephant becomes sexually aroused in the presence of a female, he becomes mad. So the elephant hunters, they train a female elephant to go near him and to run somewhere. And then they dig a big hole, a big pit, and they cover it with some grass. And the big male elephant runs after the female. He doesn't know that there's a pit there, and he falls in. 
kopu tá veľkú jamu, ktorú potom zakrýva nejakou trávou a ten vlastne slono nevie, že tam je tá jama a uteká za tú samicou a padne do nej. So in this way the senses can become actually causes of our own capt our own captivity. Takže takýmto spôsobom tie naše zmysly sa môžu stať vlastne môžu nás ako tak to uchvátiť. But the problem with the human body is that all the senses are developed, not just the hearing, hearing, not just the tongue, not just the eyes, but all the senses. So we're especially vulnerable to be attracted to all the sense objects. Advertising experts, they know this. And so they use that to serve their purposes to get us to buy things or go places or do things that they would like us to do. So the tortoise, tortoise has senses also, but the tortoise is, he knows, he doesn't, he doesn't run very fast and he's not, he can't protect himself with sharp weapons, sharp nails or, or uh, teeth. Korytnačka má tiež zmysly, ale ona nevie moc rýchlo utekať a nevie sa nejak brániť. Proste nemá nejaké ostré zbranie, alebo vlastne drápy, alebo zuby. But he knows if I bring all my limbs inside, my tail, my arms, my legs, my head, no one can get to me. Ale vie, že vlastne keď stiaňi všetky tie svoje údy, ruky, nohy, hlavu do toho pancera, tak nikto sa ma nemôže ani dotknúť. Even a lion. What can he do to a tortoise when he's in the shell? He can try to scratch him, but he can't get to it. It's, that's the protection of the tortoise. Similarly, the yogi, the protection he has against the material world and illusion is that he can withdraw his senses from the objects. But what does he do with the senses? The tortoise just brings them inside. His shell. But the yogi uses the senses for internal spiritual activity. He knows how to engage the senses in their spiritual activities. This body is not our self, it's just a covering, it's a machine. But the soul inside the driver has real senses, and this body is a kind of extension of those senses. Material senses can't actually perceive the Supreme Spirit. But when the the process of bhakti yoga is applied, then the senses actually become spiritualized so that they can be used in, in devotional service. Then they can perceive the spiritual. When they're when bhakti yoga, when they're used in bhakti yoga, 
then they they act, can act spiritually. The example is given of a iron rod. When an iron rod is put into fire, it attains the quality of fire. And finally it becomes so hot, red hot, that it acts just like fire. Or the example of a of a wire, when the wire is connected to a powerful electrical powerhouse, it can carry so much power in it, just that little wire. Because of being connected. A yoga means connection, and it means connection with the supreme powerhouse or the supreme spiritual being, Krishna. When the living entity is connected with Krishna in the loving devotion or yoga, bhakti yoga, he can act in a spiritual way. And even the senses, which are dull matter, but they become activated on the spiritual platform. For example, when the eyes come in contact with the beautiful form of Krishna, they become spiritualized. There are many examples of persons who, upon seeing Krishna with their eyes, became so attracted that they lost their interest in seeing material things. Or persons who smelled the incense offered to Lord Krishna, the smell became so transcendentally pleasing, they lost their interest to smell other things. Or tasting the food that's offered to Krishna called prasadam becomes so satisfying, so much better than material food that one doesn't care for eating material food anymore. So the process of bhakti yoga is not exactly to stop the senses, but to give the senses something better, something more delightful to engage themselves. And that more attractive thing is Krishna. Krishna's form, Krishna's name, Krishna's foodstuffs, Krishna philosophy, just by hearing Krishna philosophy one considers now I've got the ultimate education, I don't need any other education. It's amazing. But that's what happens. Uh, Krishna is spiritually so potent that coming in contact with him through the senses purifies the senses and the heart of the of the person, the soul. So that's the way the yogis or the devotees can live in the world, even though there's so many allurements around. Even though the allurements are there for the 
The senses are conditioned to be attracted, but because one gets a higher taste, he can give them up. But that means he has to transcend his conditioning of being a human, of being a Slovakian, or being an American, or being a man or a woman. Because as long as one thinks I'm Slovakian, or I'm man, or I'm woman, then in that ego, that what we call the ahankara, the false ego conception, then he will be drawn by the objects of the senses. It's like if they play some patriotic music, national music, and then there's some advertisement that we need soldiers to save our country because so some people they become captivated by the yes, I belong to this country, I have I have to fight for my country. So they enlist in the armed forces and they go and they fight and sometimes they become killed for their country. But because of their thinking that they're the body, therefore they're attracted by the sense objects. They, there's a system that kings sometimes use. It's called Vishakanya. They train up young girls, beautiful young girls, and in the, when they're just little girls, they give them a little bit of poison, not enough to kill them, but just enough so that their system gets acclimated to the poison. And they gradually keep giving the poison to the girls as they grow up. And so finally, by the time she's a mature young lady, she can drink a whole cup of poison and it doesn't hurt her. She's, she's, her body has learned to accommodate it. And then the king, or the government, government, they send her to the enemies, to the leaders of the enemy. And the enemies have a hard time resisting the charms of the young lady, so that when they kiss, it becomes the kiss of death. So that's the, the idea is that as long as we have the conception of being the body, then we're vulnerable. Hmm. We think that I need this because I'm the body and the body needs this. But actually if we're not the body, then we don't need the things that the body seems to think we need. And what do we need as souls? What is our 
food. Our food is consciousness. That is the satisfying thing that the soul is thrives on. When we understand the philosophy, we understand that the soul is already eternal. It's not that it becomes eternal at some point, it's already eternal. The soul has always lived and always will live. So it doesn't need food. And because the soul is a person, it needs pleasure, however. But in the present state, in the material consciousness, one tries to get pleasure through the senses. But that reduces the pleasure. Whereas when the soul is directly connected on the, with the super soul, then that's the ultimate pleasure. Any questions on these points? Or in discussion? Another knowledge is given here of the Okay. senses and we are in the bodily conception of life then uh, in this state how to proceed through because it's not so easy to be at this uh, elevated platform what to do and as I said in my settlement that controlling the sense of human being when we are not in the totality of the body but it's not so easy to be so easy to be at this level Yes, the advice is Savai Mana Krishna Padana Vindaya Pachang Sipai Kuntukana Engage the senses in activities in relationship with Krishna. Engage the mind in thinking of Krishna. Engage the words in speaking about Krishna. Engage the tongue in tasting Krishna prasadam, food. Engage the arms in doing service for Krishna, like cleaning the temple. Use your desires for, engage those desires in doing things, fulfilling Krishna's wishes. Don't, don't give up desires, but use them in the proper way. Just like Hanuman was a very powerful personality. But he became a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And then Lord Ramachandra's wife was kidnapped by a demon. So Hanuman used his desire and his strength and his all of his capabilities to serve Rama by bringing back, rescuing his wife. Bhakti Yoga never says stop acting, but act in such a way that you use the senses in the 
the highest spiritual way. Someone's got artistic talent. They like to paint pictures. So use that artistic talent. Painting pictures of Krishna it becomes perfect. Even if one wants to become famous, he has a very strong desire, I want to become popular, famous. Use that desire to become famous as a wonderful yogi devotee of Krishna. Nothing wrong with that. That purifies the desire. And this is the way. Engage those, those senses in devotional service. Other questions? Another example given here is the serpent, the, the snakes, poisonous fangs. So, if the poison fangs are removed, then the snake may be fearful to the children, but not to the adults. So taking, by engaging the senses, which are like snakes, in the service of Krishna, then the poisonous fangs, the danger is removed. It's like in our centers we have young men, young women, but because they're engaged in Krishna's service, they don't become victimized by each other. So as long as everything is engaged in Krishna's service, it becomes purified. We like to eat, you can eat, but if you eat ordinary food, then there's karma reaction. But if one eats Krishna Prasadam, there's no material reactions, it's all spiritual. Otherwise, every activity in the material world has karma attached to it. There's a, there's a price tag. You try to enjoy a particular thing, you have to pay the karmic price. And the karma is very binding, it forces us to take birth again in the material world. But simply the act of utilizing the senses in Krishna consciousness removes the karma. No more reactions. But one gets spiritual benefit. Anything else? Any points?
Yeah, especially chanting is recommended. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Lama, Hare Lama, Lama Lama. Start your day off with chanting 16 rounds. You'll see your mind now is becoming your friend. And if you start your day off without chanting, then the mind may become your enemy. So, that's the idea. Engage, engage the mind in the transcendental activity. Mantra. Ma mantra means man means mind and tra means to deliver. So it delivers the mind from all the rubbish ideas it has. And then in addition to that, take engage it. Rubbish. Yes, you laugh in Of rubbish. Yes. Okay. And if you feed your tongue and your belly Krishna Prasanna, that will also help pacify the mind. And if you engage your mind in hearing Bhagavad Gita every day, Srimad Bhagavatam, the transcendental vibrations, and your mind will become pacified. It's like the snake charmer. He plays, he chants some mantras, or he plays some, maybe some of you have seen, they can play some flute or some instrument, and the snake, you know, starts moving, and he's just pacified. So the, the mind is hankering to hear this, to think about this wonderful philosophy that Krishna is speaking, or these wonderful sounds. All these things, kirtans, Chanting with instruments, making beautiful music. Seeing pictures of Krishna, the mind becomes satisfied. Well, that's the art. How to surround oneself with objects, spiritual objects, so that the senses, the mind and the senses become attracted to them. And it's not artificial. The artificial thing is to be attracted to the material. That we've taken that as being the reality, but actually that's the artificial. That's the hallucination. Some people say, well, Krishna is just your imagination. But actually, the imagination is that we're thinking, I'm this body, and this is my country. And this is the way I'll get sense enjoyment. Well, 
That's the temporary dreaming. Whereas the soul is eternal, eternally related with Krishna. So that's the waking the waking up is getting out of this sleep state of thinking that I'm this body. Therefore the guru and the Vedas are waking us up. You're not this body, that's the first wake up call. And actually we don't have any other duties but to seek out the spiritual perfection in life. And Krishna has arranged it that anyone who tries to do that, his necessities are taken care of. It's mysterious how it's done. But someone who dedicates himself, I'm going to I'm going to dedicate myself to self-realization, to waking up from this illusion. And Krishna gives, okay, give him pension. It's like if you work for a company and then at a certain point you retire, they give you a pension, okay. You done nice work. Here's your pension, so <coughs> your necessities are taken care of. So if you make that decision, okay, Krishna, from now on, I'll be working for you. Because self-realization means working for Krishna. You're doing what he wants. And he has unlimited wealth, so it's not difficult for him to maintain his servants. I would like to ask how to cultivate uh, patience in spiritual life. Well, every good thing takes time. When you plant the seed of a pomegranate tree, you don't get pomegranates the next day. How long does it take? Some years. I say, I put the seed in, come on. What is this? A woman gets married, she says, okay, where's my child? I have to wait, be a little patient. So, any good thing takes some patience. And getting Krishna consciousness, that's the best thing, so we have to be patient. And it'll come, of course. Child is patient, wants to grow up quickly. It'll come quick enough. Child has to be patient. But in the meantime, enthusiasm, determination, also are important. You said that the 
nourishment for the soul is uh, Krishna consciousness. So my question is, what is Krishna consciousness or what is the essence of Krishna consciousness? Že otázka je, že Maharaj povedal, že to vyživou alebo potravou pretušuje vedomie Krišnu a otázka je, že čo je podstatou vedomia Krišnu alebo čo je to vedomie Krišnu. Krishna consciousness means to be re reconnected with Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Krishna vedomie znamená byť znovu spojený s Krishnou alebo s osobnosťou Božstva. The supreme person. To najvyššou osobou. The dear most friend of all living entities. Tým najlepším priateľom všetkých živých bytostí. The all attractive one. Tým najpriťažlivejším. The all opulent one. Tým to tým najbohatším. The person, the, the loving person that everyone's looking for. Women are looking for the perfect man, men are looking for the perfect woman. Dogs are looking for the perfect master. Masters are looking for the perfect dog. But actually what we're looking for is Krishna. The perfect friend is Krishna. Our friends in this material world, they always let us down. They let us down because they can't, they can't fulfill, they can't take care of us. But Krishna can, he is the best friend, he can take care of us in any circumstance. Sometimes friends in this world, they drift apart and then they lose interest in each other. But Krishna is such a good friend, such a true Loyal friend, he stays with us as super soul in the hearts, wherever we go in any species. Even if we're put in some abominable situation, Krishna comes. Who else will come with you if you get sentenced to prison? To iný by išiel s vami napríklad, keby ste boli poslali do väzenia, keby ste mali nejaký problém na 5 rokov vo väzení. Pojďte za svojim kamarátom a poviete, že na 5 rokov som odsudený do väzenia a mohol by si ísť so mnou, že ja tam nechcem byť sám. On vám povie, že ja mám ale aj iné veci na práci. But Krishna goes. Krishna tolerates our mistakes again and again and again, our shortcomings. He's still our friend. We forsake him, we make promises, we don't keep so many things. He keeps forgiving us. So that's what we're looking we're looking for Krishna but because we're in ignorance we don't know that Krishna is the satisfier of all desires. That's Krishna consciousness. And there's a whole spiritual world where the theme is Krishna, and all the living entities there are fully absorbed in their relationship with Krishna. And everyone's satisfied. So that's, one can experiment, one doesn't have to just take it on faith or some theory. He can actually experiment and see 
what the difference is in having transcendental relationship with Krishna. Krishna exists and he's available in in his forms and his names, his instructions. And he reveals himself to the devotees. Oh.